Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the Pleasure Points Podcast. I'm your host, James Rohr. I am an acupuncturist and a dating and a love coach designing my life around helping you find the flow so that you can feel good and get out there and be your most badass, spiritual, in love, rocking self. My guest today is my very first ever repeat guest. She is the one and only Jennifer Panza, my fiance which uh, makes it a matter of convenience. You'll hear a very funny story as to why she was the guest today and not somebody else. Be careful with those edibles out there, ladies and gentlemen. And so I had Jen come on, and we had a great conversation talking about upper limit issues, things, in the blocks that people encounter when you're trying to up-level anything in your life, finances, your love life, your health, any of that stuff. Jen, uh, along with being my fiance, is a badass businesswoman. She founded a yoga company doing private yoga lessons where she was grossing six figures in her first couple of years there. And now she's turned her attention the last few years to building her doTERRA business. And she's in charge of an amazing organization there where she's empowering women, helping them to thrive, be financially independent while also having a huge impact. And so I had a great time talking with Jen about her insights and what she's learned in this process. So I hope you enjoy the show as well. You can follow her on Instagram at Jennifer Panza and her website is jenniferpanza.com. And as always, you can find my stuff on Instagram at James E. Rohr and uh, the website invitinginlove.com. And if you want to email the show, you can do so at pleasurepointspodcast at gmail.com. So without any further ado, thank you so much for being here. And let's welcome to the show, Jennifer Panza. And we're live. Hey, Jen. Hi, Jim. You are my... We're... we're making history here you're my very first repeating guest (laughs) oh my goodness it's such an honor i won't pretend that it's just because it's also the most convenient (laughs) yeah (laughs) and the truth is is that the guest that i had scheduled unsuspectingly ate 25 milligrams of pot edibles (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and oh she's goodness. not she doesn't normally do that and uh about an hour before we were supposed to meet i got an email that said houston we have a problem <laughs> call me <laughs> so then when i called her she said that it took her a half an hour to find my email <laughs> and that she uh hasn't been able to move uh, for about an hour she just ate it on accident right yeah oops I guess that's what happens when you eat chocolate that you find in your teenage kid's bedroom. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, so she's awesome. And now instead you guys get Jen. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks for that uh, really amazing lead up. I really appreciate that. Sorry. Sorry. I've been told that when I joke, I'm an asshole. So I'll I'll try to be. uh, It's okay. I know my worth. (laughs) Luckily, I know how awesome I am. So it doesn't affect me. And I know how great you are too. No, I really appreciate you coming on. What we were talking about uh, earlier today was the uh, mindset issues that um, you've seen with some of the the people that you have, that you've worked with building your business with doTERRA. Yeah. I, well, I think it's also just, you know, being in, being in health and wellness and being an entrepreneur for the last 10 years, it's been incredible to see the blocks and the resistance that comes up, not only with myself, but with, you know, the people that I work with for sure against all sorts of issues of being able to receive, allowing abundance to flow freely and really owning your own power and and stepping up into the spotlight, I think is something that many people as they grow have actually a harder time to step into that light or step into that receiving energy it's harder to own the power and own your own worthiness of receiving so much, whether that's praise or money or success, you know, looking, people looking at you with different eyes, you know, it's a different thing for people to be able to step into their power in that way and to really own what they're, what they're doing on the planet. So. Yeah. And I've seen you like with the doTERRA stuff, you know, as you, started just from using the oils and then building the business and growing and then having the success that you've had 
you know, coming up against all of these different, you know, what we'll call like limiting beliefs, you know, these beliefs that maybe, you know, you don't deserve it or what does it mean? And as we were talking about getting to this next level as I shift, you know, even more into the coaching practice and working with doTERRA, it reminded me of this book that I've been reading called The Big Leap, where he talks about uh, upper limits that people have. And Mm -hmm that a lot of times this kind of self-sabotaging behavior happens after some great success, after people get like, they start hitting up against this upper limit and that is an arbitrarily defined uh, cap as to what people feel they deserve or that they're worth or that they can handle. And one of the things that I've heard you say um, that you picked up from one of your mentors is that the reason that a lot of people don't have the success that they want is because they can't handle it. Sure. Yeah. Well, they're not, they cannot be trusted with more just yet. And I think that how we break through that is to raise the ceiling. As, as you said, one of my favorite coaches, Deb Erickson, we were just learning about this this week on a call with her and, and, and lifting the, the upper limits of what we or allow ourselves to receive and therefore raising the lowest point that we allow ourselves to fall to as well. And when we raise that lower limit and we also raise the ceiling, then most of the time you're hitting the mark in the middle and all of a sudden your life is a lot more enjoyable. You can really thrive instead of living in mediocrity, which uh, for me is just the worst thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I was really, I really enjoyed this book called the big leap and one of the so he breaks it down I've, i took some notes here he, he broke it down where what he's found in his years as a therapist there's like four main reasons why people can't handle and contain a large amount of success and he says the first one is that the belief that you're fundamentally flawed and so if someone has this belief that they're like bad or that they're unworthy then you know, then they have to mess up. They have to sabotage it because good things can't happen to bad people, you know, and this is, it's really success in any area, right? So we can look at this with, with your business, certainly with relationships and with the coaching stuff that I do with people in love, but really with anything that you think is going to bring you more joy, that if you feel you're fundamentally flawed, then, then that's kind of self-sabotage is going to arise. Absolutely. And I think that we we don't even know sometimes what that self-sabotage is, which is has been so interesting for me in this journey as I'm going through it and leading others, is that we have no clue what it is that that our limits are and why we have put those limits on ourselves until we really start digging in and doing deep work on looking at what those limiting beliefs are and what were the reasons that those limiting beliefs actually formed. And oftentimes it's when we're kids and we just decide oh, you know, someone else is is better than me or I'm not good enough or, you know, classic playground stories where you make up your mind at a young age that, that you will be a certain way or maybe your parents told you that you were going to be a certain way. So when you're out there in the world and you butt up against this possibility of another way of being, another way of living, another opportunity, it's just like, you, you can't even fathom that that's possible because of these deep stored unconscious patterns. So really the trick is to, to discover what those unconscious patternings are and then start to reprogram them from the ground up. So I love, you know, the oils and tapping yoga, uh, this mind movie thing that you've been doing with Joe Dispenza, I think is really cool. And that's definitely worth mentioning here and reintegrating the, the literal foundation of our brain patterning so that some other reality is possible. So the other ones that, that um, the author of The Big Leap, his name is Gay Hendricks, was talking about is that the false belief that our success will be disloyal to our upbringing or that it might leave behind people in our past, right? And this is what we were talking about earlier with, you know, what are the family beliefs about money? And certainly someone who's stepping into like the doTERRA businesses, they're increasing the rank and all of a sudden their paycheck goes from $3,000 a month to nine or $10,000 a month. And then from 10 to 20 to 25, you know, it's like, what is having that kind of money? What is earning that kind of money mean for how they were raised? You know, are there stories that with that kind of money comes, you know, if you're making that much money, you're not going to have a good family life or that, you know, you can't be the only one to succeed when everybody else, you know, is suffering. Sure. 
or that you if you receive more abundance then you you then have to be responsible for it and then you have to be good at investing and you have to be good at managing your money and you have to be you know there's all of these contingencies that come with having money in our minds or oh only people that have money are you know they're bad or they're greedy or they had to take advantage of someone else in order to get to that place of them thriving for me the big one we did a uh, assessment on money blocks at a t- recent training that that we did actually here in New York, which was really fun uh, a few weeks ago because for fun for me is diving into <laughs> the depths of my subconscious and <laughs> figuring out how I can uh, rewrite the story and up level. But you go through about a hundred questions and you just try to go through it rapid fire to see what your what your blocks are to money. And it's just a knee jerk reaction. It's not, you know, you don't want to think about it too much because if you rationalize it, you think about it, you're probably going to come up with a different answer. So as we were taking the test, you know, you had to come up with one thing that is a repeating story or a pattern that you have that's a blocking you from the next level of your success when it comes to abundance. And the one that kept coming up for me is the responsibility component was that, oh, you're not responsible enough to handle more. And that typically is because I'm, I'm a fun loving person. I love to, um, you know, spend my days going out and discovering the world, being spontaneous, enjoying life to the fullest. And I've never really associated that with responsibility responsibility when it comes to finances. And in fact, I've told myself a story for many years, you know, that I'm, I'm not responsible enough to handle more, I guess, on some subconscious level. So realizing that after doing this money test, it was, is laughable because you realize, oh my gosh, that's just what a more untrue statement that in fact, I'm more than responsible. I'm more than capable of handling large sums of money. So as soon as that block is removed, then everything can start flowing forward. And I know that if I'm doing this kind of work and I can show you know, other women on my team, for example, we have a, a newer girl on our team who uh, is a kind of a Instagram celebrity, Miss uh, Gypson, Miss Hannah Haller. And she, uh, she was very open about her stories of struggle and with abundance and receiving. And she literally is this Instagram influencer and she's been, has hundreds of thousands of followers online and she couldn't even barely make her payment for her bills every single month. And, um, she, she was never really willing to allow herself to receive any money because of the stories that she told herself when she was growing up or in her, you know, early twenties of what, what it meant to have money and, um, what that meant about her, if she was spiritual still, or if she was, if she was being authentic, if she was making money from her social platform. And it's been so cool to work with her and, and many other women on my team to see what, what are these patterns? What are these, what are these limiting beliefs about money and together moving through that resistance? You know, some people are afraid of making more money than their parents and what that means with their relationship with their parents. Um, I ha- we have a girl on our team that, that I've been working with her on that or someone who believes that, you know, working in order to be wealthy, you have to be stressed out and busy. This is a big one that I see um, that people, especially in the United States, you know, we feel like we have to be burning the candle at both ends and have adrenal fatigue and um, have to be totally, totally destroyed in our minds and our bodies by the time we get to that quote unquote finish line of abundance, which could be whatever, you know, it could be $1,000 for some person and 5 million for another person. But that the way that you have to arrive once you get there based on a money belief is distorted, stressed, you know, exhausted. Otherwise it wasn't worth it or you, you didn't do it properly. And so I love this stuff. It's so much fun for me to, to dive into the psychology around what path we put ourselves in and what, what blocks we create in order to, to break through or to live within that confinement for however long we decide. Yeah, well, it's more than that. I mean, part of what I like to see with what you're doing with your team and then what I do with my coaching clients is that this kind of insight comes from taking action, right? It's not just about like, let me just sit around and twiddle my thumbs and like have someone talk to me about some like childhood psychological bullshit, 
you know, where it's like, no, no, I'm out in the world. I'm trying to affect the change. I'm trying to, you know, grow my business or I'm actively out there looking to call in a great partner and to bring myself into flow and alignment. And it's from meeting the the obstacles, from taking a look at like, what is it that we're encountering while we're trying to uh, take action towards our goals that, you know, then certain things get illuminated because this is a huge distinction compared to just, you know, sitting Sitting around and you know asking yourself like well what do i need to do to get ready and like well what are my beliefs around money it's like well first you got to get out of the house and like you know or at least take action in the direction that's going to get you closer to what you want and then see what comes up otherwise you can just sit there and perpetually be in a state of getting ready to get ready which is a trap that a lot of people fall into with everything you know it's like well what you need to do is talk to somebody you know talk to potential customers but instead, you're going to spend all day working on your website or you're going to like think about what your Instagram post in a week may be. Whereas like, well, what do I really need to do right now? It's like, well, what I need to do is, you know, whatever. Well, and I think that that is the true interesting part about it because the the psychology behind that and the reasoning is actually a fear of success. It's actually a fear of receiving whatever it is you've declared that you want. Because if you were ready to receive it and if you trusted yourself to handle and to to take more on, then, you know, those those procrastination things would not be happening. You'd be hitting the ground running and you would be able to receive your goal. So I think so much of the the blocks and action that I see, whether it's with yoga teachers or with um, my doTERRA business, is because there's some underlying belief of fear of success not feeling good enough or some some true sub, subconscious sabotaging that's happening based on a, a limiting belief that's put into place that one might not even know about and that that is causing that getting ready to get ready. So even as much as they want to go out there and take action in the world and do the things that they know that they're supposed to do to grow their business, they're totally paralyzed by their own fear of actually receiving the thing that they are seeking. So if you are finding yourself in a place of wanting and lusting after ideas in your mind, but you are stuck in your, you're not able to take action. That's when you really need to find a coach and someone that can help you to break through those barriers and those limiting beliefs, because we can't do it alone guys. And that's why it's nice to have someone with a map that is like, Oh, Hey, I've been here before, or look to your left, look to your right. And I got you. Don't worry. Uh, We're going to get through this together which is why I appreciate so much what you do with the women that you coach. And obviously I love what I do with, with coaching the women, primarily women that I work with in the oils business. And um, it's just really cool to see what happens when, when you aren't stuck anymore, when you're not limited, uh, when you trust someone and some, some higher process to live differently. What I love about our backgrounds is that these beliefs get rooted in the physiology of the body. And so it's not just about like, I mean, honestly, listening to you talk about some of the stuff to me, it's kind of like, ugh, you know, it's like, it's heavy. It's like you're diving into these thoughts and it's just like some kind of, you can get into some weird sort of mental, like masturbation wormhole where you're just like going round and round and round and round and round. But that's where we can engage the physiology to make the shift, you know? So a part of it is like, where is your body contracting? Mm. Where do you feel your body expanding? Where do you notice that your shoulders relax? What are your symptoms that are arising? Is you, are you feeling a knot in your stomach? Are you feeling palpitations in your heart? Are you getting headaches and are they on one side? And having a yoga interpretation of, you know, even looking at so, someone's yoga flow and being like, well, they're, they're inhibited here. So that might mean that some of these other things are going on for them. Or certainly with the Chinese medicine, it's probably even more direct where it's like, oh, okay, the meridians that go to this part of the body, the cheese not flowing well there. So I can suspect that, you know, you're blocked here with jealousy or you're blocked here with um, fear and doubt or you're consumed with worry and all of that is there. And so, you know, being able to tap back into the physiology is such a valuable uh, resource to make the transformation where it isn't just like, you know, again, sitting there and like looping again and again and again with these thoughts, because that's part of the problem. It can be, that's part of of so often the the epidemic of, you know, trying to do the work where it's like, 
yeah, okay, so you're asking yourself some questions, but you know, you got to take action. There has to be movement. Otherwise, you're just like you're looping. For sure. And I think that the body is it's like a little treasure map, you know. That's why I love yoga and the physical practice so much because it gives you the opportunity to discover those little sweet spots and those little treasure points of, oh, there's something to look at here. There's there's some a way that I can lean in to this resistance and go deeper. And half the time, I think we don't even know what's hurting in our bodies these days. I, I Before I started doing yoga, I had zero body awareness. I couldn't have even told you um, what, if, what my hips felt like or my hip flexors or even my feet or my shoulders on a day-to-day basis. I had zero body awareness. And I think that that's why moving and creating a physical discipline of some sort, of course, I'm biased. I think yoga is phenomenal. And I really like Qigong too now since uh, you've been teaching me that over the last few years to discover the physicality of why am I, you know, like I had my feet injury from about a decade ago when I was backpacking in South America and I had foot tendonitis. And I know that when my feet flare up since then, oh, I look at myself and I, am I, am I doing my physical grounding postures that are rooted in stability and trust and support? Am I doing that on a day-to-day basis? And, and if I'm not, okay, is that contributing to my physical discomfort and being able to navigate that and look at that. And instead of, instead of looking at your physical symptoms as a a disadvantage or something that is, is holding you back or making you less than, but to see it as that treasure map and something that is like, Oh my goodness, the, the reason why I'm feeling this is because my energy and my is not flowing. My cheese not flowing. My mindset is not in the right place. And how can I shift that? How can I shift that through my actions, through my thoughts and through my physical movements? Literally, you can do many poses or physical action to reinvigorate the energy flow in the body. And the connection to the mind, body and spirit is, is so powerful that you can't even have one without the other. They're so interconnected, which is why I love so much holistic medicine and school of thought, because it does treat the entire individual and not just, you know, just the physiology. Yeah, for sure. And I want to talk about the oils, but before I get there, I want to finish up with um, these other two uh, upper limit issues that tend to arise according to uh, that book, The Big Leap. So and I was thinking about this because, you know, when a, when a woman signs up to work with you to become um, a doTERRA wellness advocate and to start building her business or his business, if it's if it's a guy, they immediately become their a business owner. They are in charge of their business and they get to run their business however they want. And so somebody who might always have craved a leadership role but never had that opportunity before, now all of a sudden they get that and they get to declare that. And there's a whole kind of host of significance energetically of what that might mean for them. And I think that connects with some of these other upper limit issues. So he says that there's a false belief that that you're a burden in the world. And so that might mean that you sabotage your success so that you aren't a bigger burden. So what that would mean is that like, if people want you to stay just as you are, then if you were to become bigger and a more powerful version of you, that might become a threat. And we've seen it where, you know, certain friendships have to change. Certain relationships with family also change because, you know, you become like the average of who you're around, you know? And so if the company that you're keeping, if they're not living the lifestyle, they don't have the health that you want, they're not having the income that you want, then there's a very good possibility that as you increase your capacity to hold more, that you, the average of who you're hanging around is going to change. You know, the people that you're hanging around are going to change. So this one I think is is especially like a very real thing that has very noticeable effects where sometimes the crew that you used to roll with might change a little bit. And that's just part of that growth. But to be committed to that growth, you know, it's a it's a big deal. Yeah. And then the other one is um this false belief that uh, you must dim your brilliance so that you don't outshine someone else. And so holding yourself back instead of taking that necessary action and unleashing your heart's power onto the world because you don't want others to feel envious and inadequate or even hurt by your success. You know, those two kind of go similarly in the way I put them in my head anyway. 
And I think that's a huge, huge thing. You know, what does it mean for me to be successful? What does it mean for me to be in love? What does it mean for me to have a great committed relationship? I mean, I know you and I, you know, we talked about it before when we first started hanging out that we wouldn't even talk honestly about the feelings that we had for each other because we didn't want other people around us who we knew were in unhappy relationships or who were single to feel bad, Mm -hmm. you know? And so like we were consciously sort of, or when we talked about it, we noticed that we were doing it, you know, limiting kind of the enthusiasm and joy. And part of that's because like listening to people that are like newly in love, like it's, it's annoying, you know, (laughs) (laughs) but it was also very much this other thing. I mean, part of that, I didn't want to draw too much attention to it. But I was also mindful of like, I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. And that's kind of, you know, I don't think I would do that again, you know, if that was the, if that was the case. But all of these different, you know, these belief systems that arise that are great questions to ask if you're not hitting the kind of the success that you're looking for. Yes, I think that, you know, that's a, it's an interesting point. It's funny because I wouldn't have thought of that for us. But I think that when you're, looking at how you compare yourself to others, which we're doing constantly with social media just blaring in our face, is is this question of who am I to live this great life? Who am I to experience great freedom? Who am I to experience great love? What did I do to deserve this more than my good friend who's, you know, single and at home on a Friday night being really sad and not happy with their lives? Who am I to enjoy all of the beauty that that I have have. And I think that 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 is it's a real thing and it's a fine line between boasting about it and and living in your truth. And you know, I think that that's something that that I think you and I do really well is celebrating our incredible life that we've created together and gosh, it has not been easy to make this. Like I, I have been that girl that is at home, not happy with my, my business and not happy with my, in my relationship or alone at many points in my life and, and not, not being here. And, and I know the path that, that it, it took to get me to here. And it wasn't, it didn't just appear overnight. It is a conscious, methodical, daily vigilance, that effort that I have, created for myself. And that is something to celebrate. And that is something to be really proud of. And, you know, I think that our love and our relationship and the way that we communicate and my business and my friendships and the way that I live my life is no accident. It's no accident at all. And it's something that I'm honestly just so proud of. And I I wish that everyone could have this opportunity to, to create a life like this because it is possible. It's just, are you willing to, are you willing to realize that your greatness and your brilliance and your beauty and your true magnificence in the world is something that's worth, it's worth seeing. It's worth sharing. It's something that's worth experiencing. We should put that on a poster. (laughs) I think that's a great idea. Do you remember, this is one of the moments that I just loved you so much was uh, when you posted something about, I don't know, it was something on your on your social media, on your Instagram, and some hater was like, well, easy for you to say, like, you know, not all of us can go to the beach at two o'clock on a Tuesday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you just like... Oh, I lost it on that <laughs> chick. Lift out. Yeah, I was like, um, excuse me, like, what are you doing with your life? And wh- what what little confines have you put yourself in, in a cubicle all day? And, you know, I'm glad that you, cho- you choose that. And also don't hate on the people who don't choose that. Because, you know, when I was getting out of college and I was starting my career, I had the choice. You know, I got hired at a paper selling company. That was my big job out of college. Like it the was, office? Like Dunder Yeah, Mifflin? like full on like the office. <laughs> I don't even know if you knew that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I got hired to sell paper like Dunder Mifflin. Up, Pam? Yeah. <laughs> I could have been Pam at the office and nothing wrong with Pam. I think she's great. It's amazing. Uh, she also found love, you know, and she, <laughs> she yeah. would have got me a gym. Oh my 
gosh, that's funny. But at the end of the day, that wasn't my path and I didn't choose that. And I like being able to run at the beach. And, you know, I didn't always used to live by the beach and I moved by the beach and my rent is a lot more expensive by the beach than it was uh, in a different part of town. But I decided if I'm going to live in Miami, I want to be living in Miami and enjoying that life. So I've chosen and worked very hard for every single thing that I've done in my life. And not because my parents just handed it to me on a platter, but because I was willing to go through the motions and take the actions of creating this for myself. So when that chick posted that, I was like, oh, hell no. (laughs) Oh, no, you did not. (laughs) So talk, if you would, a little bit about the decision that you made to create a lifestyle for yourself that has more time and freedom to it. So this is going to be fun for you to hear since you're my future husband. But, you know, looking in as I growing my own business, I'm my own entrepreneur. I always knew that I wanted to work for myself and and do that as that was modeled for me as a kid. And I saw that opportunity and lifestyle being very because your mom was an entrepreneur. Me. Yeah, my mom was in a, exactly so. Making. Yeah, and she. I grew up, you know, with my mom being home whenever, uh, whenever I was done with school, and she was around all the time, and that was really great. And I also, I just, I guess it's because I'm a panza too. You know, just taking direction from authority figures just does not work well in my in my genes and my blood. It's like a. It's it's worse just, from someone that was uh, working as a waitress for so long. Yeah, but working as a waitress wasn't that bad because it, you could still make your own schedule and you could you could just switch with someone if you didn't feel like working. And there was still a lot of <laughs> time freedom. Or like if you wanted to go on a vacation, like you could just do whatever you wanted, which is why I, I actually liked working in the service industry because you're kind of like your own. Like if you want to make more money, you just work more. If you don't want to work, you just don't work. Um, and you can always get another restaurant job, you know. So so that that was better for me than working in a structured, you know, here's your task do what the boss says. That's just not, whew, those are, yeah, those are, those are tough, tough things for me to adhere to rules like that. But, but be becoming an entrepreneur and, and understanding what is possible. I mean, this is the dream casting. This is the vision creating of the, the fun time. Like when you're a kid and your parents are like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, what do you want your life to look like? And, you know, when I was just doing yoga, um, I was still trading time for money. And I could imagine myself as a new mom, you know, my main income is having teaching three or four yoga classes, five yoga classes, even sometimes a day, having a new baby, like that's not going to happen. right? I mean, you, you have have to you have to be with the, with the child. So um, it was clear to me that my business model needed to change, but I also wasn't willing to sacrifice and shift my authenticity and my impact and the industry that I'm in. So that's where the perfect marriage of the yoga and the doTERRA started to come in because I saw the value of the oils, how it's changed my own life and the life of my clients and many other people in my world. And I thought, oh, wow, this is a great, this is a great additional source of income for our family that that gives me the time and location freedom while still maintaining authenticity and being in that gl- that global space of health and knowing that I'm I'm making a true impact in a bigger way and that I'll be able to live my life the way that I want and if I'm if I want to teach as many three or four yoga classes I can but that I'm not beholden to doing so so that I can also travel, be with family and, and have enough income that I don't have to worry about some of those self-care and, you know, leisure activities. And you get to run your business the way that you want. I mean, you have mentors that you can reach out to, right? There's an incredible community within the doTERRA network to get some guidance and support, but ultimately the choice comes down to you. So for even the most kind of like obstinate person, you know, there, there's still a way to run the business the way that you want to. Yeah, I think that that's one of the coolest things that I have found from this is this community, this camaraderie, because 
as a business owner, it can get kind of lonely out there um, running your own business as I did in my yoga business for many years that, you know, you're the one that has to make all the decisions and you're the one that's that's just sailing this ship by yourself one direction. You're the one that's got the compass and you're 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 the one that's sailing. And the cool thing about doTERRA is, that, is like you said, that community aspect is that there are hundreds of people that are in your network that you could ask advice to at any given moment. And specifically, you have a small tribe that you're working with of, you know, six, 10, 20 people that really become like a family. And even though they're running their own independent businesses, you still can bounce ideas off of each other. And you you have this sense of camaraderie and community that I've never had before with anything that I've done. And I love it so much. It makes your success that much sweeter when you have, uh, you have a tribe with you cheering you on and celebrating your success. It's just, it's, it's everything. Well, now it's very intentional, right? I mean, the founders of doTERRA built it. They organized everything and structured the, the whole business model around the role of like mentor mentee where, you know, you as a mentor, it's in your vested interest for the mentee to do as well as they possibly can. Unlike some other network marketing where it's like gets competitive and then it gets weird. You know, this is like the, from what I understand, you correct me if I'm wrong. It's like, it's all built around helping each other rise up together. Yeah. And that's what makes the doTERRA network marketing model so powerful. And you know, in the beginning, when I heard that doTERRA was in network marketing, I like threw up in my mouth a little bit because I was like, oh my God, like, no, I would never be a part of like one of those companies. And um, after learning more about the founders and, and understanding the compensation model and understanding the t- nature of business as we're moving into an influencer based marketing industry nowadays and understanding why doTERRA created uh, the business in a network marketing model now it's so smart i mean it was it was so brilliant for them to think of this model as they were building the company 10 years ago that they had that kind of vision to be able to see the trends in the industry and understanding that you know people these days they don't want to learn about health from a giant video commercial they don't want to learn about health from someone that they don't trust and they don't know that they they want real answers and they want real solutions that are safer, cheaper and actually effective and they want them in a way that that is tried and true by their neighbor, by their girlfriend, by their aunt, by their sister, by their brother, by by people that are influential within their own sphere. So, you know, that's what network marketing is and I think that more and more businesses and the more and more we're seeing it already. I mean, look at look at how all big companies are advertising now. They're they're paying influencers on on social channels to promote their product because that's where consumers are buying. And especially as we're getting into the millennials and the younger generations, um, you know, big businesses, they, they can't be trusted in that way. So it's cool how doTERRA has been able to build the largest essential oil company in the world and have it still be a grassroots movement and have it be individual business owners that are, they're propelling the change in the movement forward. And now it's being picked up by real healthcare insurance companies like Blue Cross and Blue Shield that have actually added doTERRA in as a wellness benefit. I mean, that's huge. And then, you know, where are the people going to go to get their their health benefits to learn how to use their oils? They're going to go to the woman next door who is having, you know, uh, an educational oil seminar on how to use oils with their kids or oils for stress or um for me, you know, I'm really passionate about helping women get off birth control and helping prep their bodies for fertility as, you know, they're in their young mid thirties, like myself, you know, that people are, people are looking for real solutions and they're, they're asking their people around them. And I think that that's why the model is so powerful for social purposes and also for financial purposes. It's genius. So who would you, how would you describe your ideal business partner. So if someone's listening to this and they say, wow, you like the time freedom sounds great. The financial stuff sounds great. Is it for me? Like who do you love to work with on your team? 
So the people that do best on my team are the people that are already have an entrepreneurial spirit. So someone who is used to running their own business, has always dreamed of having their own business, is is a type of person that's a go-getter that has a sphere of influence um, and they're used to operating in that, that sphere. Someone who is incredibly passionate about health and wellness, uh, maybe they've never even tried essential oils before. Like I had never used essential oils before because I was, but I was in the yoga profession. So I was very savvy with a lot of the health and wellness trends already. So someone who is in that space, someone who's incredibly stable and committed as this business is not a business that you can do sometimes you can do it part-time, but if you do it sometimes it won't work. So the person has to be very driven and, and committed to really, really creating something from a, a place of self-motivation and not from an outside factor because... So there's although, no boss, right? There's no yeah, one breathing nobody, down their neck to say, you got to do something. So it's got to no. be that that internal Yeah, drive. someone has to really want it. Someone has to be motivated to create it. And um, someone who... Someone who is is not afraid to make an impact and, and influence in a way that we were talking about earlier of someone, someone who is ready to shine and shine really bright and get up there and and make the mark on the world, live in a live in legacy and lead yourself into living a life that is Instagrammable, <laughs> you know, not in the set. I mean, we all have our ups and downs, of course, that we don't show on social, but, you know, are you willing to live a life that is extraordinary and to, to create that vision that you see yourself in the true full potential and not just live in that mediocrity anymore? And that's pretty much it, I would say. Awesome. So one of the things that I really love about the oils, bringing it back to kind of this upper limit problem is, again, I'm kind of obsessed with physiology and the body's energy flow, is that being able to incorporate the oils as a tool for pattern disruption because, you know, I mentioned the, the phrase sort of looping and getting stuck in the same thought process over and over again. There has to be a pattern interrupt. And we see this a lot with you know, anxiety and just general stress, but certainly with upper limit issues where if we can create a shift in their physiology, then, you know, it's easier for them to reprogram. It's easier for us to reprogram what's possible. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you mentioned the mind movie, right? This guy I've read, uh, this Joe Dispenza, he's got this book called Becoming Supernatural, which totally blew my mind and I thought it was amazing. And so that's using... Uh, I created a movie with, you know, certain images and words where it's sort of like a vision board, but it's more engaged with the senses with the put a soundtrack on it. And that helps to reprogram some of the neural pathways as to seeing what's possible, getting yourself conditioned to uh, like a higher, a different frequency. But one of the reasons that I love the oils is that we can use the oils also for that pattern interrupt. And I use it a lot with my coaching clients as they are doing this work on raising the limit of what's possible for them, reconnecting to their heart, re-engaging their energy flow, that being able to lock it in with the scents and the aroma and the biochemical changes that happen when we use the essential oils, it just accelerates that entire thing. You know, could someone get there just by doing some meditation on their own? Perhaps, you know, but can they get there a lot faster by using the oils? Like without a doubt. So at the end of one of the episodes that I talked about with the channeling, the, you know, when go speak on one, in one of the episodes I mentioned using, there was a lot of, oh, it was a sacred geometry episode. And they were talking a lot about triangles and, you know, creating this kind of energy pathway in the body. And I talked about using rose and frankincense, kind of combining the, the super yin qualities of the rose with the, the very yang qualities of the frankincense. And it has this really nice balance, I think, between heaven and earth that happens there. What are some of your favorite oils when people are encountering this upper limit issue or if they're really focusing on stepping into a new identity as a, as a woman, as a person who is capable of handling so much more wealth, love, intimacy, and connection? 
Oh my gosh. Well, there's about a thousand oils that I could think of because every single word that you mentioned, there's actually an oil for each of those individually, separately. Um, But I do want to tell you something because you probably don't even know this, but it's funny that you said about the yin and the yang of the rose and the frankincense because in colloquial terms in the oil community world, we actually call the king of all oils is the frankincense and the queen of all oils is the rose. So that's actually their nickname is the king and the queen. So, which I thought was fun to point out because you probably just recognize it. Sometimes I get it right. Yeah. 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 And it's cool because it's just confirming what, what we're talking about. So for anyone who is coming up against that upper limit within their own life, there's a few oils that, that come to mind. Um, the first one, um, in addition to the frankincense and rose, which you mentioned, are the two highest of vibration of oil. So for sure, those two. And also uh, geranium is a really powerful one. And this is an oil of connecting to heart space and, and the oil of truth. And it's really good for trust and repairing the heart. So rubbing geranium over the heart can be really powerful for reprogramming and recentering. And I think that whenever we come back to our heart center and our true purpose, I wanna, I'm like craving this oil right now. I want to go. <laughs> I'm like, why is the geranium? I want to put it on now. It is it's reprogramming the the internal structure emotionally and then also on a physiological level and remember that each of the plants uh, the reason why it has an emotional healing is because of what that plant embodies in nature and and when we put it on ourselves we're then taking on that energy which is really powerful the other oil I would suggest is tea tree oil. This is melaleuca, which is a very powerful clarifier or a cleanser. So this one is great to rub on the stomach or on the third chakra, which will clear off any any limiting patterns that might be stuck there, rooted in the third chakra that are limiting and inhibiting power. A good one to combine with that would be lemon or lemongrass, which will energetically break the blocks to some of those barriers, some of those programming that we have created for ourselves to clear that out. Where would you put that? Um, so I put it on the solar plexus. Yep. And we rub it right there in the third chakra area. So the point between the belly button and the heart, uh, right where the ribs meet, that is a great place to apply that oil um, or both of those oils. And um, the final one that I would say is Copaiba. And I love this one because it's a very powerful oil for stress and anxiety. And I think that oftentimes as we're growing and we're pushing that upper limit, it can be darn stressful. It can be something that's, that's challenging on a day-to-day basis. So using an oil like Copaiba, which has the properties that are it's very similar to a CBD oil, it has a different chemical constituent, but it actually will bind with the, the endocannabinoid system, much like CBD, and will bind with receptors in order to create uh, less anxious feelings and promote calm energy. That is a great oil that can be used internally as well as diffused throughout the day as someone is pushing up against that, those upper limits and be able to do that in a calm and relaxed, energetic way. Yeah, I think that as when it comes to growth, there is this, this process of like creating a new identity for yourself. You know, and I think that's part of like where people start wearing a bunch of crystals and, you know, the mala beads and all this bullshit. Like, I mean, it's not bullshit, but, you know, it's like they're, you they're have mala beads. I know, I know. I like, it, you know, and I like crystal. I got crystal all over my office, you know, but there's like, but it's, it's like stepping into this identity of creating a marker of who you used to be and who you are now mm. and incorporating the oils, I think is a great way to consciously reinforce any kind of transition that people are, are making when you're stepping into yourself as successful or romantic or sensual or, you know, able to receive love or, you know, able to receive abundance having these kind of scent markers can be so helpful to reinforce and reclaim that identity because there is such a power of inertia or such a power of, you know, that rebounding effect of coming back to an old crappy baseline. And we want to shift that baseline higher uh, to create that new identity for yourself. Yeah. And I like thinking even, even one step is that the fu- the future self, the you that is coming is creating the present, which I know you've talked about many times in this and, and anchoring with a scent as 
our scent is our most powerful sense of all of the different senses that we have. Anchoring that in that idea, that vision, that that connection to future self in with the scent literally will recreate that programming in your brain on a physiological level. So the amygdala is the part of the brain that works with the scent system and that's the limbic brain. So when we are breathing in an oil like wild orange, which is the oil of abundance, and we're smelling that as we're running our businesses, as we're envisioning our future selves, creating that life, that dream, and we're bringing it into reality, having the vision and smelling the oil at the same time will literally create that in the present moment. And as you create that in the present moment, it then becomes a reality. So do that. Yeah, <laughs> every day. <laughs> as you you know, as you're talking, I, I just keep getting this image of a of a woman who has like adrenal fatigue or like borderline adrenal fatigue who might be hearing this and this things have been going okay or they've been going pretty well, but she's frustrated. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that in that book, The Big Leap, that he also talked about is making the shift from your zone of excellence to your zone of genius. Mm -hmm. And that the zone of excellence is where you're used to operating. And, you know, you do well there and people are used to seeing you there. And to really step into that zone of genius might mean alienating people's expectations of you. And that I think a lot of adrenal fatigue happens when people are operating even from their zone of excellence, you know, and you think, well, it's my excellence. But that can be exhausting if you have that drive for that genius, when you know that inside of you, you've got an impact that you want to make, when you can feel that you're not earning what you want to be earning, when you know that there's something more out there for you, but it feels invisible or it's hard to find. That being able to take that that risk to step into that zone of genius is really a, it's a life saving endeavor, you know. It's a life enhancing, a life nurturing endeavor. But there are some consequences to that. Sometimes people get uh, unsettled and frustrated. And that's where having the community in like the DoTerra world or you know any other kind of organization that you might work with where it can be supportive. You can get that you can get that support. But I I keep getting these pictures. You're talking of someone who is like in that zone of excellence or maybe not even that well, but they're, they're frustrated and they know that they have more of an impact to make and that working with doTERRA, both using the oils to help balance the physiology. I mean, I love the vitamins. We talked about that the last time you were here on the podcast, you know, and getting the nutritional support that you need that way, along with reconnecting to the spirits of the plants and the earth and connecting with that kind of the goddess energy, using the other ones like the frankincense to open up the crown chakra and where, you know, you can start really becoming this powerful conduit between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And then to have the business opportunity as well, where you can start making more money than a lot of women ever thought that they could make and men too, for that matter, you know, with really making more money than they ever thought they could make where it's like the, it can really be the antidote to a lot of the, the struggles that people are dealing with now. For sure. Well, if you're out there, woman who has adrenal fatigue, you should call me and we should do a consultation because there's a lot of oils that can actually support that. So we have a blend called the Zendocrine blend, which has about 10 different oils in it that support the kidney liver, as well as basil, which is really also phenomenal for supporting the adrenals. The biggest thing is in any success, I believe, is the habits that you create on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and taking care of yourself and having a self-care routine is crucial for thriving to be available. So it doesn't matter if you make it to the finish line and you're raking in all the cash or you're, you know, you finally found your lover, but you are your, your health is off and you're not feeling well, you know, that, that you can truly enjoy that. You can truly enjoy that. So, so let's create healthcare routines and self-care routines on a day-to-day -day basis that allow people to thrive and create a simple, easy way that that can happen in an affordable option and then create a business around doing that that can help others to do the same. And it's such a cool business model. I mean, like even thinking about the people on our team, you know, it's like they have you coaching them. They've got me, you know, participating to coach them as well. And it's such a, such a great tool f to deepen your capacity as a human being to love and to help others to feel good and to make a great impact and to be rewarded financially for that too. It's tremendous. 
Yeah, it's kind of funny actually. We 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 laugh a lot in uh, on our team calls because it's basically like if you if you were to pop in on one of our calls, you'd be like, "This, you guys are. This is like a business that you guys are doing. I, this seems a lot like a personal development course that someone would pay thousands of dollars for." And um, so much of our business is just rooted in personal development that it's it's laughable sometimes how it's like, "Oh, you mean that the more that I work on myself and the more." Or that I evolve in a beautiful, consciously open way, the bigger my paycheck gets. And the more people that I help, the, the, the bigger I'm receiving financial abundance, the more financial abundance I'm receiving. Wow. Like that's awesome. And that's, that's truly what we're doing. It's pretty freaking amazing. And the truth is, it's just getting started right now. I mean, the people that are listening to this podcast, I actually have a webinar that I'm going to be doing probably before this podcast even comes out. So it will be available for anyone who's interested to reach out to me. But if you're interested in learning about the statistics of the industry of essential oils and the marketplace and healthcare and kind of where the trends are going and you are a numbers person and you'd like to see that, please reach out to me. I'm happy to send that to you or it should be on my website as well um, where you can just click through. But um, Tell the people what it is. What's your website? Yeah, so my website's my name, jenniferpanza.com, or you can reach out to me on Instagram. It's just jenniferpanza, P-A-N-S-A. And, you know, really do, if you're if you're just curious, let me know because it's, it's I would feel horrible if you are seeking something like this and you never had it properly explained to you and understood the true opportunity that's that's available right now and the shift that's happening within our healthcare field and within our our system right now because it's real it's ripe and the people who are going to take it and run with it us being you know Jim and I being one uh, a very powerful couple that is leading the way through that you know I would just feel bad if somebody miss misses the boat just because they didn't you know they were curious and didn't get the all the facts and weren't able to hop on board now yeah we're talking time and location freedom along with massive impact and a nice paycheck. Yeah. Who doesn't want that? (laughs) Awesome. Well, Jen, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. Thank you so much for coming on here. And uh, you guys, thanks for listening and tuning in. If you are looking to step out of your comfort zone, when it comes to business and the impact that you're making, reach out to Jen at Jennifer Panza on Instagram, jenniferpanza.com. And if you're looking specifically for help returning to flow in your life, to attract in a great partner, you can find all of my stuff on invitinginlove.com. And I'm on Instagram at James E. Rohr. Anything else, Jen? I just think your podcast is so great. You're amazing. Oh my God. We'll have to get that edited out. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, we'll catch you next time. I love you so much.